So today I want to go over what may be the strongest druid build in season four of Diablo 4, which is a tornado druid. Now this version of a tornado druid is going to be using four different uniques and you pretty much need three of them for this version of the build to work. That's going to be the Tempest Roar, the Tabalt Will, and the Hunter's Zenith. Now this is primarily what's going to be used for doing pits, doing nightmare dungeons, and being able to do more easy bosses. You would generally not be using hunter zenith if you're using this specifically as a boss fighting build and on top of that i'd also recommend you have wild heart hunger boots which will just massively increase your damage especially when you're doing things like the pit or high nightmare dungeons or hell tides and that brings us to our skill tree starting off with our basic skills just put in two points anywhere we're not actually using these these are just to get lower into the tree then we're putting five points into tornado as our main damage ability upgrade one has a chance to spawn additional tornadoes upgrade Upgrade 2 has a chance to make enemies vulnerable. This is going to be one of the main ways we apply vulnerable. Then we're going down 1 into debilitating roar, just a massive AoE damage reduction. Upgrade 1 fortifies you, and upgrade 2 heals you for quite a bit over its duration. Then we're going down, we're taking all of the companion skills, because this is going to be one of the main ways we scale all of our damage. We're taking wolves, we're taking a poison creeper, then we're taking upgrade 1 of poison creeper to extend its duration, and then upgrade 2, which gives us massively increased crit chance to enemy we hit with our poison creeper then we're taking ravens upgrade one increases the crit chance against enemies that ravens have hit and then upgrade two gives us two additional ravens that's the main reason we want that upgrade then we're going down we're taking trample the main reason we're actually going to be taking this is for the unstoppable upgrade one makes it do more damage the less enemies it hits it can actually deal decent damage because of how much just general damage scaling we have and upgrade two is going to fortify us this upgrade for trample and our upgrade for for debilitating roar is the main ways we're going to keep ourselves fortified and then that brings us to our passive starting with heart of the wild to get three into wild impulses our core skills do more damage but cost more three into predatory instinct for increased critical strike chance and then three into increased movement speed of wild and werewolf and we're going down three into intentional fortitude for increased resistances three into vigilance so whenever we use our debilitating roar we get even more damage reduction then we're going down one point into elemental exposure which is a lucky hit to cause enemies to become vulnerable we're just taking one point in this because it gives another chance for vulnerable and just because we had another point that really didn't have anywhere else to be put one into neurotoxin to get one into toxic claws critical strikes with our werewolf skills cause enemies to become poisoned we don't care about the poison damage itself we just care that they are poisoned for n venom where you deal increased critical strike damage to poisoned enemies then three into defiance nature skills do more damage to elites three into circle of life anytime we cast a tornado we will get a pretty big heal and then we're going down three into quick shift when shape shifting into a new animal form you deal increased damage for eight seconds stacks up to 30 percent because we get some additional from one of our uniques and then heightened senses when you shape shift into an animal form you gain damage reduction and increased movement speed depending on what form it is we also get more points into this because of our unique as well then one into natural fortitude shape shifting fortifies you for two percent of your max life we shape shift a lot so this is just some additional fortify to try to keep ourselves at max fortify at all times then for our capstone reasoning bestial raid after being in werewolf for two seconds gain 30 percent attack speed for 15 and after being in werebear for two seconds gain 50 percent multiplicative increased damage for 15. now you do want to play around this you don't have to care about the werewolf because you're going to be in it so much you'll always have the attack speed but you have to make sure that you're in werebear for two seconds after you cast something now normally how this is done is you debilitating roar you wait the two seconds then you have 15 seconds of damage increase and you generally just use trample for procking other things and giving a spirit back from some of our other items. I usually use debilitating roar to get that proc because that's a massive damage increase. And then next up, we have Spirit Boons, Weariness to take reduced damage from elites. We have Iron Feather for pretty big health increases. We have Avian Wraith for increased critical strike damage. We have Energize, which is a lucky hit that can just give you a bunch of spirit back. You can actually be spirit starved in this build if you don't play it right or in certain situations. Then we have Masochistic, another lucky hit. Crits with your shape-shifting skills can heal you for 5% of your max life. This and the other healing from our passive skills will give us quite a lot of healing overall. 
And then we have our Paragon boards. And like always, I'll have a link in the description to a build planner if you want to follow point by point. I'm primarily going to be going over the board selection and the glyph selection. Now, I will say one thing with Paragon boards, you should be making sure these fit into what gear you have, especially with season four. You want to make sure you can get yourself to armor cap and you want to make sure you can get yourself to your resistance cap. That's going to be very important. So if you have to take out some points into damage increasing parts to put into those defensive parts, I'd recommend doing that. Now on our starter board, we have werewolf, increased damage while on werewolf, damage reduction while on werewolf. Then we're going up first board, we're taking his ancestral guidance. After you spend 75 spirit, which happens very quickly, you gain a massive damage increase. This will be up a majority of the time. And the glyph we're taking is earth and sky, which will give a bonus to magic notes. So we're getting core skill damage, some resistance to all, which helps quite a bit. And then nature skills deal increased damage to crowd controlled or vulnerable enemies. You can also use these type of glyphs to get more intelligence or dexterity if you need that to get the secondary effect of rare nodes throughout your different boards. Then we're going over to the right. We're taking the inner beast board, but we're not taking the legendary node itself. The glyph we're taking is fang and claw. This will again increase magic nodes within range. Then wound werebear or werewolf, close enemies take increased damage from you. This will give us some armor, some shape shifting damage. This is something I've been thinking of switching up. There may be some better options in having this glyph here, especially as you get more and more gear. So these Paragon boards can definitely change up as you start to gear more. Then we're going up. We're taking the Thunderstruck board. Your storm skills deal increased damage equal to 20% of your damage versus close or damage versus distant. Mine's currently at 100% on this. So this is an absurdly high damage increase, a very important part of this build. And then the glyph we're taking is Outmatch, a bonus to all rare nodes within range. So some storm skill damage, some damage reduction from vulnerable, which is pretty nice. Then you'll be dealing increased damage to non-elites and bosses. Then after that you're going back down you're going over to the left you're going up and you're taking the constricting tendrils board you're not taking the legendary note itself and the glyph we're taking is territorial increase damage of close enemies damage reduction from close enemies then we're going over to the left and we're taking the lost for carnage board and again we're not taking the legendary note itself and the glyph we're taking is spirit increase critical strike damage and critical strikes increase the damage enemies take from you by two percent up to twelve percent so just some more pretty big damage increases now this board has primarily been focused on getting a lot of different glyphs I do want to do some testing on other boards because as you've noticed, there are some legendary nodes we could be getting that would actually help out with this build. Lust for Carnage would give us more spirit regeneration. Inner Beast would actually help with our spirit cost. So there are some other Paragon board options I want to go over, but this is a pretty good one. Kind of focus around just getting as much base scaling as you can get. And that brings us to our gear. Starting with our gems, you're going to want critical strike damage in your weapon. You're going to want max life in your gear. And then on your jewel, make sure you cap yourself on all of your resistances. This is what I'm using my jewelry. You'll probably need to use your jewelry to cap all of your resistances. If you have all of your resistances capped, you can pretty much use whatever else you want. If you need more armor, you can use armor gems, but you're probably going to need them for resistances. And that brings us to all of our unique gear, starting off with Tempest Roar, which gives a lucky hit. Storm skills have a chance to grant for spirit, which can actually help with your spear generation a bit, but this is primarily used so your base storm skills are now also werewolf skills. This helps scale pretty much everything in the build. Then we're using Tabalt's Will. You deal increased damage while unstoppable and five seconds after. When you become unstoppable, gain 50 of your primary resource. Now this is very important, specifically when you're doing anything that's not a boss. Because anytime we use our trample, we become unstoppable. This gives us a massive damage increase and generates a lot of primary resource. And when you mix Tabalt's Will with Hunter Zenith, we're able to use our trample a lot because the thing we care about with Hunter Zenith is that when we get a kill with a werewolf skill, our next non-ultimate werebear skill has no cooldown and costs no resource. So basically we go into combat, we get a kill with Tornado, then we trample. And because we have Hunter Zenith proc, trample will instantly refresh. So we have another trample. So if you just get a kill every time before you use trample, you can use trample as much as you want, which will keep this big damage increase up. And every time you cast trample, you'll get 50 prime primary resource, which when you're in any situations where you can get kills, this will make sure we never have to care about spirit. And then for our final unique, we have a wild heart hunger. When you shapeshift into werewolf or werebear, you gain a wild heart stack. This will give you up to 1.5% increased damage, stacking up to 20 times. So this is just a big multiplicative damage increase that will constantly be proc. You do have to play around this a little bit. You want to make sure to constantly be going into bear with trample and then using tornado to go back into werewolf to keep the stacks going. 
And that brings us to our legendary powers, starting with our weapon. Core and race skills deal an additional 20% increased damage per companion you have. And again, this is multiplicative, and we have a lot of companions. We currently have three wolves, we have two poison creepers, and then we have four ravens. Every single one of those is giving us 20% multiplicative damage increase to our tornado. This is one of the biggest scaling portions of this build. This is how you actually deal a lot of damage with this build. Then for our necklace, your core skills deal up to 45% increased damage based on your fortify or multiplicative damage scaling and we have fortify a lot because of our multiple and we keep ourselves fortified 100% of the time so this will just be procced all the time. Then for our other ring gain one additional companion in addition your companions deal increased damage. Now our companions can actually deal decent damage because of the new scaling with season 4 but you primarily want this because it gives us more companions which just helps us get more damage to our tornado. Then for our gloves tornado will seek up to three targets. So this just gives our tornadoes some tracking. You throw out tornadoes and they'll go around hitting a bunch of different targets and they'll just keep tracking them. And then finally on our chest piece, we have gain damage reduction while shapeshift into a werewolf, which will be a majority of the time, just more damage reduction. Now, if you're earlier on in gearing and you have really low armor, you could get disobedience. If you have say really low armor, disobedience would actually give you a lot more damage reduction than just getting that damage reduction while in werewolf. So that is definitely something you could change until you start to upgrade your gear so you can get more armor to get yourself armor capped. Now with my build videos, I'm usually not going to be going over all of the stats you're going to want to be getting for the different gear pieces. You'll be able to more easily find that in the build planner and in the description, but I do want to go over some more important stats, specifically on your weapon chance for tornado projectiles to cast twice. That's very important. We already have a similar chance in the upgrade to tornado, but this again will just be massive damage increases. And then resource cost reduction on your weapon, and then resource cost reduction on your rings, both through their normal dropped rolls and through their tempering rolls. That's actually going to be very important. Resource cost reduction is how you're actually able to keep using your tornado, especially when you're on bosses. Because this specific version of the build is not specifically for boss killing, it's still very good for that, but you use up your resources when you can't trample a lot, so that is where resource cost reduction comes in on your gear pieces, and that will scale more and more as you continue to level up. But if you are feeling like you don't have enough resources, especially on bosses, I would recommend using the Elixir of Resourcefulness. On the tier two version, it gives you 20% resource cost reduction. This is absolutely massive, and you should be able to have this up 100% of the time. All of these are just from looting them. I've never crafted one of these. If you go run a bunch of health tides, you'll get a bunch of them. And past that point, you can just craft them. They're actually not that expensive. So I definitely recommend running those if you're running into any of those problems until you get better rolled items to get resource cost reduction and until you start to upgrade your gear through master working to scale those even more. But that's the entirety of this version of a Tornado Druid build. Incredibly strong, easily one of the best builds in the game, easily one of the best Druid builds, potentially even the best Druid build in Season 4. It's ridiculously strong, but it does require a decent bit of gear, and it actually does kind of require you start master working your gear again to start scaling up that resource cost reduction. But that's all I want to go over, so thanks for watching. Not ready yet. Must wait a moment. 